The social media bill passes second reading today, and senators have assured us that they're not trying to gag the media, but trying to curtail fake news. And in 2018, can you guess what killed Nigerians more than te the terrorist group Boko Haram? Well, there were lots of murders during the herdsmen and farmers clash. And this is Plus Politics, and I'm Marianne Cole. Well, you are watching Plus Politics, and first up today, we are looking at the 2019 Global Terrorism Index, that's the GTI. According to the report, terror-related incidents in Nigeria increased by 37 percent, from 411 in 2017 to 562 in 2018. And also, the deaths from terrorism in the country rose from 2040 in 2018, uh, a 33% increase, yes. Now, the increase was due to a substantial escalation of violence by Fulani extremists, while Boko Haram recorded a decline in deaths from terrorism. Now, this is an unsettling report. Will the National Livestock Transformation Plan change anything? And are these displaced people being sorted out as we speak? I'm sure my, my guests here might have the answers to all of that. I'm being joined in the studio by Sam Adelike. He's a political analyst. And John Wesley, also a political analyst. It's good to have you join us, gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening. So I'm going to start with you, um, John. You have run for office before. And I'm guessing that when you were campaigning, you said you would bring security, you would try to ease all our problems. And this seems to be like a big problem. Um, Two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, um, the United, the, the World Health Organization, or some, one of those big bodies, did talk about the fact that a lot of people who were victims of terrorism or insurgents have been abandoned by government. I can't remember. I think Amnesty International, one of those people. And here we are. The GTI index is telling us that so many more people died at the hands of these so-called um, cat, cattle rustlers or um, herdsmen. Much more than the guys we call terrorists who are Boko Haram. And then the government is yet to prescribe these people because they say they're faceless. Where do we even start to deal with this issue? All right. Um, I am of the, I'm of the opinion that um, <clears throat> uh, one of the things when it comes to security it goes beyond the physical, you know. When you talk about Boko Haram, you talk about um, <clears throat> the, the approach, the style uh, in which they attack. And at some point, uh, the security agencies began to, you know, have this head-on face-off with these guys and all of that. And uh, not too long, we began to have the headsmen attack and all of that. I said something, maybe on plus politics as well. I said, the headsmen attack, right from the uh, inception, you know, we have always had, you know, cattle rustlers having one issue based on land and all of that. But we never had them use guns. We never had them, you know, you know fight this terrible and all of that. It could either be farmers, and the cattle rustlers, not those people who are not uh, elders or farmers. But now we have those who carry guns, who even use deadly ammunition and all of that. But we are yet to acknowledge the fact that it could also be a decoy by the, sub, the said Boko Haram, you know, as another way of attacking people and killing people. If you say that they have killed more people than Boko Haram, the question is, if they had killed more people than Boko Haram, what are they fighting for? What do they want? And then if you say that they should be declared as a terrorist group, and the government has said they are faceless, because those people who have a face, the Mieti Allah and all of that, they have come forward to tell you that they are not the ones doing this. They are not the ones doing this. The ones they have had clashes they have claimed responsibility for, and they are telling you that those people who kill here and there, they are not headsmen. But a whole lot of these things have not been addressed properly, just because of what? Politics. Politics 
you know, has divided us over and over. And what's the point? You say that uh, because the person who is the president is, is, is one of them, and that's why nothing is happening. But well, we're talking about lives. Are you saying that because the president also, you know, has a cattle ranch or whatever, or cows and all of that, that's why the president will not bother But do you not lives? think that, again, these are all uh, speculations due to the fact that the, the issue has not been addressed head on. Now, maybe if the presidency or the government, that both the legislature and the, fed, the federal executive, decide to deal with this issue and speak truth to power, maybe there will not be room for these speculations. Don't you think so? And because maybe, again, because of the divisions we have in the country, there's room for speculations like, oh, maybe the reason why the president is not dealing with this issue is because he's from that part of the country. I mean, these things are not out of the blues. It's because we have created a, an atmosphere for it, right? Well, who created an atmosphere for it? The truth of the matter is this. The president mm -hmm. is the number one citizen and the CSO. Mm -hmm. So everything that is revolving around security concerns and falls at the table of the president. So when it comes to headsmen, I have, at least I am aware of series of uh, approach, series of um, 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 talks and all of that revolving around this. Remember I said this, Mietiala is the group that represents all kind of uh, whatever headsmen, up north and all of that. If these people have come forward to old meetings, they are not faceless. They have come to tell you that these people who carry out these atrocities are not headsmen. And in situations where they are headsmen, we have heard that they fight over lands and all of that. This is not new. This has been happening since the days of John the Baptist. But talking about the killings more than that of Boko Haram, that's my worry. This is where we should worry that it is beyond just being Oh, so we shouldn't be worried when one or two people are killed. We should be worried because there are much more people killed, no, much no, more than I'm Boko saying, Haram. No, so I'm, now we should be worried. No, what I'm saying is the worry should be that it is not about Edsmen. It's about some people who have devised other means beyond just Boko Haram, beyond throwing bombs. I've devised other means routing through Edsmen. Because you wonder the kind of ammunitions, if somebody who is you know, taking care of cow in the bush, how did you come about this kind of rifles that you use? I, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna move to um, Sam. It's interesting that we have allowed this to grow to the level which it has. Unfortunately, more people have died than Boko Haram has killed. Does it seem that there is no solution to the matter? Because prescribing might not be a solution as every other person is crying for, you know, let's prescribe them. And the government is saying you can't prescribe a group of people that you do not know. If this were, if his, if what he's postulating is anything to go by, we have the DSS, we have Homeland, we have private detectives, we have security forces everywhere, we intel. If this was a decoy of Boko Haram, why was it so difficult for us to deal with it? We are playing with fire in Nigeria. And this report is a national emergency. That there is nothing subtle about this. There is nothing um, that should give us a good night's sleep with this report. Because if you look at it in perspective, we're comparing ourselves with Syria and Afghanistan. We are among the top three countries ravaged by this kind of killings in this GTI report. And we cannot hide away from the fact, it's an open secret. The federal government is complicit in the way the herdsmen are being treated compared to Boko Haram. We, this all happened in our eyes. But the he just made, but he just made a case to the that Mieti asked the herdsmen because the, the president are said, a group of people He who, said, Nigerians, accommodate your countrymen. When the governor of Benue went to meet Buhari to intervene in the matter when Esme was slaughtering the people. So the, so the, the, the president knows that these 
headsmen are also infiltrated by 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 criminals and by the people who are also who, who claim to be to to be to be herding cows. So we, we cannot totally dissociate the fact that are you trying to say that these are, not... are also complicit of course. or they're conniving because it, it, it's, it's so clear because, because I'm asking because for example let's say both of you belong to a, the same group or a society and then an outsider comes in and perpetrates a form of violence you would know to report that outsider because you know that it's going to give you a bad name. But in this case, we're not getting any of that. So is that no. what you're saying? Exactly. We are saying that there is a strategic plan, which is not confirmed, but it, it, it looks like the way the reports and these killings have happened subtly, subtly, subtly. Now, even because of this data that was collated by this international body and published at this level, we will not appreciate the extent of the lives that have been lost. And every life in Nigeria matters. But we, we, are, we are talking does uh, it? like, I uh, say, uh, you know, uh, does, yeah, does it, it does is 1,000 more than this. No, 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 no. Every life that is lost on a daily basis, either through Boko Haram or through herdsmen, need to be accounted for. The president, the Nigerian government, the APC administration needs to understand the fact that every life, every, every life matters. So this should not just go as a thing of, oh, we are now uh, looking at herdsmen Boko Haram, herdsmen Boko Haram, whosoever is killing anybody should be prosecuted. If these guys need to be declared a terrorist organization, they should be. Because we are, we are trying to compare, um, um, look at the IPOB. Who are declared terrorist organization? Who, how many people did they kill? These guys are only protesting and talking about. Um, I don't know why I even brought up this IPOP issue. But but the fact that people who are killing people with evidence, people who are slaughtering people, people we will see them with guns, and they are in the bush. We cannot take a very hard stance on this. So until we get to a point whereby the leader of this country understand the fact that people are hiding under the cloak of your ethnicity to perpetrate evil. Look at the, the climax of the situation when the when the daughter of um, the uh, Afanfari um, era statesman was killed and everybody went. It was a parable of 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 of, um, of condolence visits. So he said to declare national emergency that in, in the next one week this must end. But talking about sorry, sorry. So talking about well complicity. <laughs> uh, there was a time where former army chief T Y Danjuma raised an alarm on this issue, saying that the army had a role to play <laughs> in these herdsmen killing, uh, you know, farmers and the rest of it. He even said that Nigerians should defend themselves. And we have a clip of that. Uh, and when we come back, we'll talk more about oh. it. it. It didn't end well for him, by the way. But let's take a look at that video. This state is being, is under assault. There's an attempt at ethnic cleansing in this state and, of course, in all the riverine states of Nigeria. We must resist it. We must stop it. Every one of us must rise up. The armed forces are not neutral. They collude. They collude. They collude with the armed bandits that kill people, kill Nigerians. They facilitate their movements. They cover them. If you are depending on the armed forces to stop the killings, you will all die. One man. And that uh, general, retired <laughs> General T.Y. Danjuma saying the army, and this is a former army general saying that the army, you know, collude, colluded with, you know, these armed bandits. Again, he did say something that made the army invite him, and he, you know, he was probed by the army. He said, you must rise to protect yourselves from these people. If you depend on the armed forces to protect you, you will all die. And it was, the, it was a whole rage at the time. And then it just died down. See why Dan Juma is from Taraba State. And I know where he's from. He's from Takum. I know his house. I ran a documentary on the Juku and the Thief crisis. 
I have substantial evidences pointing fingers at him regarding the crisis. If he is coming up to television, the last, when he said this, I was just laughing. You see, there are things that we say. One of the problems we have in this country, it's unfortunate that, you know, when we come on television, there are things we cannot say. But you just said something which you yes. do not have evidence to show us that no, the this, claim that you made that I am saying, is substantial. This that I am saying, if Plus TV Africa is willing to run an investigative journalism, travel to Taraba State. No, no, no we want your evidence because you just said on TV you, that you yes, have substantial evidence pointing you, to yes, two identities I am telling you as having a hand in something criminal. I, so would I like to see that evidence I am telling first. you that when people say things, they don't say things just because... You want, to, you want to appear in good light. What responsibility or what role did you play or have you played in your own immediate community where has been ravaged with ethnical crisis for years? For a particular point in time, it rested. And not too long, it happened again in the same, same community. But that's detail. But, de but I'm not making excuses <clears throat> for T.Y. Danji, but, but that's detail for most communities in Nigeria right now, there are two communities at the border of Kalaba Itu Bridge where you have Cross River and Akwaibom fighting over land and they're killing themselves. If you go to River State in the Ogoni Axis where you also have the um, Adoni people, it, it's normal. What I'm, it's a land war, but we wait, cannot wait, say, also, wait, 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 we cannot say that. say that, oh, well, because we're not fighting or we're not dealing with the crisis at home, outsiders can come and kill our people let and us keep quiet about it. Let us proscribe every community community that they kill themselves. Let us proscribe the trailers that kill our people freely on our bad roads. Let us proscribe certain brands that own these trailers. What exactly, Let us call what them exactly are you names. saying? Are you saying it's okay for people to be killed? Because I'm not saying it's okay so for people exactly to be killed. Is your... what, I am, what I am trying to say here is this. After four years, when the president is no longer the president of this country, and we still have eight men attack, come back to tell me that the president that will be president then is because he's from that part. That is why he is still unable to provide a solution to eight men attack. I am telling you that this is something that we should look at beyond eight men attack. You gave an instance. Myself and Sam, we belong to the same group. It's as good as coming to say that the group that we belong, that is known for a particular business, credible, all of a sudden, maybe because of one reason or the other, it got infiltrated. Will Sam be happy or will myself be happy that somebody looks at us in the face and calls us a terrorist group? Because some unscrupulous elements so are my question, So my question again, I'm coming back to my yes. question that I asked. Maybe you, you guys didn't get it. If you realize that someone has infiltrated you, what have you done on your part that is to what, help security agents that is to what, fish out these bad eggs? But, you saw, but you saw several points in time where they had meetings even with the security agents, even saying that this is what they will do, this is what they will do, this is what they will do, that is what they will do. See, let me tell you something. The truth of the matter is this. If people die every day, and nothing is done. Every other little group will wonder if government, as it were, is unable to tell you that at also point in time, Boko Haram killed set of people, and we have not been able to produce a good number of people to say that these are the guys who perpetrated the bomb blast over there, who perpetrated this. And you are now coming to talk about some people in the government of S Men killing people, and you are saying that the 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 body should be able to come and tell you that these are the people that are perpetrating that evil. Okay, once again, yes. this conversation is not just about the Mieti Allah, so that we don't make it about them. I'm going to bring you back out. What has government, security agencies, the army, what have they been able to do to reduce these killings? Because security is the job of government, whether we like it or not. Right. Whoever is killing people, whatever is killing people, that should be the duty of government to make it stop. So it's not. Let's, let's not make this conversation about Mieti Allah. And I'm taking you back again. How ha, how has the government dealt with this issue? Why why are we still talking about it at the end of 2019? It, I mean, if this report didn't come out, we probably wouldn't know how many people have been killed. Because this report, this because report, this report came out 
these people who made this report also should also be able to advise the government that this is how you should deal with this issue. If you travel on Nigerian roads at every point in time, you find checkpoints. You go to communities, you see soldiers. You go everywhere, you see security men all over the place, all over the place. It boils down to the fact that, based on what government has said, that we want to secure all our communities. We went as far as even closing our borders, right? Okay, so, if you ask this question again, government will tell you that they have put so lot of measures in place. How the come of people the are still dying? And the, yeah, people are still dying because people keep quiet. That is the truth. How do you mean? Yes, people keep quiet. You said something the other time. If the two of us belong to an organization, for the fear of the fact that if I go and tell these people that I saw so, so people who carried out this atrocity, I don't want somebody to come and knock on my door the next morning, then I keep quiet. It is a major thing that is happening to us as a country. Because even you don't trust the security agencies, everybody is supposed to be a part of security. It's not only those in uniform. When you talk about intelligence, you talk about all of those things. Is it about those people wearing the uniform alone? There are people who also hate easy uh, security activities. But when those people who are supposed to do that also are afraid and do not have an assurance that they are also secured, what do you expect them to give you? What do you expect them Interesting. to tell you? Interesting. Let's come back to Sam. Um, going forward, because the truth is, these issues will keep being rehashed when figures are brought up, statistics are brought up. It, it, the alarm bells go off that, wow, this is how many people are being killed on a daily basis. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a bit tired of saying, <laughs> what should government do? What should go <laughs> government should know what to do because they are the government. We should not be telling them exactly what to do except when it comes to but certain it's a things. But democracy now. I know, I know, but we cannot... I, when, for example, I'm not a trained security expert. Thank you. I cannot Thank tell. Thank you for saying that because most times how when to do his job, so I'm wondering. <laughs> at this point, I don't know what to ask you. Maybe. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Where because I cannot here? say, what should the government be doing? I'm sick of asking that question. <laughs> I think we should um, have a lot more public um, disturbance in courts. In terms mean? of going by the Hong Kong example, see, if we do not... Well, the Hong Kong protest here yes. became very violent, and you know what that means in Nigeria. Um, We're no, going no. to be shot at. <laughs> Let's start from, you know, um, We're trying to shutting protest down. against death. We do not want to be killed in the process. So what do you mean so by do we, disturbance? So do we then sit and wait till we die? Because either way you will die. Either you take the path to the gates of the enemy and ensure that, oh, you, 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 you communicate your grievances on a consistent basis. You know, it's about intelligent How? discourse. I just said so. It's important that we develop the culture of civil disobedience in a proper and organized fashion. You're using, this you're using two words. Yeah, yeah it's not like an irony. Words but, but, then, but then on, until Which we I want, leave I want the you bots. To be as clear as possible. For I example, cannot be disobedient and be disobedient in a nice way. It's not possible. You can be obediently disobedient. In the sense that you are telling me that I... Because, see, we cannot just sit and talk and wait for something to be done unless we leave our comfort zone and go to the point that will stir the honest nests until we get to the point where the government, okay, we say, okay, yes, now these guys are serious. Let's do something about this. Because if we do not leave our comfort zone and take the battle to the battle in court now, intellectual battle, that discourse, that protest, that, that demand for what is right, and, 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 and risking everything and saying that whatever it takes, if I, if I perish, I perish. Mm -hmm. Because right now, we are, still, we are still... How many Nigerians want to perish? <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth? Yeah. Quickly, in the we first need place. to wrap up here. <laughs> because it's security, it's not something that we should be discussing here. Let me tell you something. When Osama bin Laden was killed, it was not on any of the CNN news. It was, no, it was nowhere. Of course, and that's why I asked, should we be telling security <clears throat> agents no, how am, to do this? No, exactly. yeah, so I, they I, will I'm, do their own job. I'm this is our, our the own job. The same thing about the... Um, <laughs> What's the guy, the bag or what's his name, the, the recent Al, guy, Al-Baghdadi, Al yeah. that was also 
You did not hear anything about the process. See, the truth of the matter is, talk about civil disobedience or whatever. It's not going to happen in this part of the world. <laughs> a whole lot more people will die. We will mm. kill ourselves. It's not the government now. We will kill ourselves. The truth of the matter is this. I have always said something. When we go to sleep, when there is crisis, it is not far-fetched. Open the books of politics. The answer is there. You cannot tell me, you cannot tell me that what is killing us on a daily basis is because we hate ourselves alone. Something is the root of the evil. And, and that something is what we're all <laughs> scratching at and we're trying to find out what it is. Uh, uh, John Wesley, Sam Adelik, political analyst. They're not going anywhere. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be talking about, well, the National Assembly. They are trying to gag social media. We'll talk about it when we come back.